Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, let's talk about um, sign of uh, certain angles where we can really easily calculate the value of the sign. Um, I call these angles basic angles. And uh, primarily I'm talking about 0, uh, P over 6, which is 30 degrees. P over 4, which is 45 degrees, P over 3, which is 60 degrees, and P over 2, which is 90 degrees. So let's call these angles major, or basic, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, again, I'm considering sine of these angles because I can do it. I can calculate the value of the sine. It's not easy to calculate the sign of, let's say, 19 degrees. Uh, but 30 or 60 or 45, that's easy. So that's what we are going to do. And uh, I, I'm sure it's the uh, basis for many different problems in trigonometry, which uh, I hope I will eventually show to you. All right. From the beginning. Um, let's return back to the basics. Our sine as a function is defined as an ordinate of point A on the unit circle where this angle counterclockwise from the positive direction of x towards the point A is equal whatever we want this calculation to be done with. Now, we are concentrating only on these values of uh, angle which are in the first uh, quadrant of the coordinate plane. We will talk about other angles a little later. So, in this case, the, um, the angle XOA is one of these. So let's just calculate what is the sign for each case. Now, in case 0, well, if this angle is 0, then A coincides with X, which means the ordinate, this position has coordinates 1, 0. This is 1, ordinate is 0. So in this particular case, obviously, the sign is equal to 0, because ordinate is 0. Next. Next is P over 6, which is 30 degrees. So if this is an angle of 30 degrees, let's consider this particular right triangle. A, A, P, O. Now, in this right triangle, so P is a projection from A to X axis, Q is a project, projection to Y axis. So, this particular catechus is equal to lowercase p, and this particular catechus is equal to Q, because the coordinates are P and Q. Now, what do we know about this triangle? Well, if this is 30 degrees, then we know that an opposite catechus, which is Q, is half of hypotenuse. Now, uh, the hypotenuse is 1 because it's a unit circle. Q is our ordinate. So basically what we have come up with that the sine of P over 6, which is 30 degree, is 1 half of the ordinate. Next, P over 4. Okay, let's consider this angle 45 degrees. Well, then obviously this is also 45 degrees, right? So we are talking about the right triangle with uh, two cachety uh, congruent to each other. So P is equal to Q. Now, if P is equal to Q, 
and p squared plus q squared, which is a Pythagorean theorem, is equal to square of hypotenuse, which is 1. Well, we are interested in q, right? So we can substitute instead of p, we can substitute q. We will have 2q squared is equal to 1. Or let's multiply it by 2. It's 4q squared is equal to 2 because I want to have a square root nice. So from 4q squared, if I do the principal square root on both sides, I will get 2q, right? Because 2q squared will be 4q squared. And on the right, I will have square root of 2. So q is equal to square root of 2 over 2. So sine of p over 4 equals to this. Next. Next, this is p over 3 or 60 degrees. OK, so this is 60 degrees. Now this is 30 degrees, right? Now, we have a very similar situation to before. We have an angle of 30 degrees in a right triangle, which means that the opposite catetus, which is P in this case, equals to half of the hypotenuse, right? So P is equal to 1 half. Now, hypotenuse is 1. So again, let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find Q. We know that Q squared plus P squared is equal to square of hypotenuse, right? Or q squared plus 1 quarter, p squared, right? It's 1 quarter equals to 1. q squared equals to 3 quarter. So q is equal to square root of 3 over 2, because this squared could be 3 quarters. So we came up with sine of p over 3 equals square root of 3 over 2. Now, the last in this series is 90 degrees. When this angle is 90 degrees, it means we are turning all the way, and A would coincide with Y. Now, its ordinate, obviously, would be the ordinate of Y, which is 1. Coordinate of, uh, of point Y um, which is an intersection of this unit circle with the y-axis. Obviously, it has a cis of 0 and ordinate of 1. So for sine of p over 2, we have equals to 1. OK, so we have finished with these major angles. Now, um, how to deal with angles outside of the first quadrant? Well, let's remember the qualities of the sine. Number one, sine is an odd function, which means... So, whenever, fun, whenever angle is negative, from a positive direction of x, we go clockwise. For instance, this. Which is exactly the same thing as this, by the way. Because... Uh, one angle is different from another by a period of 2 pi, and sine is a periodic function. So for all these, we can use this. So for instance, sine of minus 30 degrees is equal to minus 1 half. Sine of minus p over 3 is minus square root of 3 over 2, etc. So this is this. Now, what if it's in this quadrant? Let's say my angle is here, the third quadrant, and this is an angle. Well, let's continue this towards this point, so it's a diameter. And now, obviously, this angle is this angle plus pi. So we need a formula, something like this. If this is x, this is x plus pi. So to calculate x plus pi, we can actually calculate uh, the sine of x plus pi. 
we, we have to calculate the sign, sign of x and do something with it. Now, what should we do? Again, we know this property. We have discussed it when we we're talking about properties of sine function. Now, if the angle is here, well, let's have a symmetrical relative to the y-axis. Obviously, this angle is equal to this angle minus this angle, right? So we need something like a sine of pi minus x. And again, we were discussing this property before. That's the same thing as sine x. Now, both cases are actually quite obvious from, from the geometry of this. Because if these two points are symmetrical, it means their ordinates are the same. Now, if this point is centrally symmetrical relative to zero, then it means, obviously, that the ordinate uh, are equal in absolute value and uh, opposite in, in sign. So using these and these properties, we can find out any uh, sine angle for one of the major angles which we were discussing. Um, that's it for sine. I'm planning to do the same for all other functions. And uh, uh, I do suggest you actually to go to unizor.com and um, look through notes for this particular lecture so you basically understand everything better. But it's a really simple material and uh, it's important only because um, we will probably have a certain number of problems related to these uh, particular qualities uh, of, uh, of sign and other functions. That's it. Thank you very much.